Hey, Sarah gang, I'm back again, y'all. Look, guys, I gotta do this thumbnail real quick. So give me a second. How's that? <laughs> Anyways, so today I have two spicy shawarmas. Oh, sorry, guys. Two spicy shawarmas, some french fries, and a salad to top it off, guys. And you guys already know. Coke. No, I didn't go to BK, y'all. It's called Reusable Cups. Hey. Oh, anyways. Y'all, I am starving. This is like my first meal of the day. Okay, I might eat a little bit before I start talking again. Mmm. Mmm. You see that, y'all? Mmm, yeah, chicken, tomatoes, cucumbers onions and lettuce healthy right see and then get a little french fry mmm so good y'all i love it i'm loving it that's mcdonald's huh oops <laughs> you can have it your way that's Burger king right mm-hmm mm. mm. Mm, 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 mm. mm. Y'all know I need my handy dandy napkin. Mm-hmm. The only thing about this, it's pretty much like a pita bread, so it's pretty thick, but it's actually really good though. Mmm. 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 Yeah, I'm fat. Oh well. Mmm. Put some ranch on the salad, y'all. Ooh, ooh, chicken. Chicken bake. Oh my goodness. Excuse the noise, y'all. It ain't me. Okay, let me get me some salad. Yo, this fork, giant What was it gonna grab? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Y'all, it got all up in my hair. Mm. No feelings. My hair was hungry too, I guess. Mm-mm. It probably got some more left, guys. It's okay. I can shower again. I'm totally fine with it. Keep it clean. Mm. Mm-mm. So... Today, I'm gonna be talking about my pregnancy, guys. Let me tell you, it was rough. It was rough. So, when I was younger, doctors told me I, could, I wouldn't be able to have kids. It would be really hard to get pregnant if, the, if it was a possibility. Mm. One day, well, I'm gonna tell you how I found out, guys. Mm. So, I told my husband, I said, babe, I'm feeling kind of weird. It don't seem right. Like, I don't think I missed my dot. For you females who know what that is, I'm pretty sure men know what it is too. But, yeah, I don't think I was that late. Or, I don't know if I even missed it at all. So, your girl got a pregnancy test from Dollar Tree. Mm -hmm. That's the best dollar I ever spent in my life. Well, technically $6 since I bought six of them. Um, I took it. I went to the restroom with him. And he said, Babe, I don't think so. You already know the deal. And I was like, 
Are you sure? I'm really feeling it. Oh. I took the test. I did everything. And my husband was in the restroom with me. He had turned around. And specifically on the test, it says, what's it? You have to wait three minutes, you know, for the for it to be accurate and for the lines to show up. You know, there was one solid line already. Oh my goodness, I have some more ranch, y'all. I'm not that broke. But 30 seconds later, guess what came up, y'all? The second line. It was light, but it was coming up. I was like, babe, I'm pregnant. And he was like, no, you're not. And I was like, no, I'm serious. The second line showing up. And he was like, that's not possible. It takes three minutes. It's only been 30 seconds. I was like, okay, but don't be shocked when you turn around. You know, me. <laughs> yeah, I was still looking at the test. Another 30 seconds passed by. Ooh, that line was solid. And I said, I'm telling you, it ain't going to go away. It's still there. And I was like, it was crazy. And I was like, boy, it's there. I'm pregnant. Congratulations. You're a father. <laughs> and he was like, are you serious? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, take the other test. I took two more. All came out positive. That's why I say, if y'all ever need a pregnancy test, Dollar Tree or 99 cent store still work. Okay? Don't hate on it. It might be cheap, but it worked. They tell you if you're positive. And you know why I was there? Because when my cousin found out when she was pregnant, she did the same thing. So I was like, why am I going to spend $8 on the first response? Or all the other pregnancy tests? A dollar will do. And if anything, I can get eight positive tests. Y'all see? It's about quantity, not quality sometimes. And that's what happened. And he's pretty excited about it. Well, I think on my hand, unless he was just lying. He was like, oh, girl, don't have this baby. Don't have this baby. But I had, I asked him and he was really happy about it. He was so happy to have a junior. But then this cuz he wasn't a junior. He got a Messiah. That's his name. Messiah. It ain't Messiah Jr. It's Messiah. Mm hmm. But so throughout my pregnancy. I was working. Remember how I told you as a delivery driver? So I was doing that job. And boy, we all have complications. When I say complications, I mean, I kept throwing up, guys. It's to the point where every time I delivered, I had to, like, stop. Does it make sense? Because I was feeling, like, so sick. <clears throat> and I don't know what it was. It's like whatever I put down in my stomach, I feel sick. If I don't eat, I feel sick. I just felt sick the entire time. This was in my first trimester. Hold on. Um, that's what happened. Um, sorry, guys. I'm really trying to replay it and make it organized. For you guys to know. So you guys been like, oh my goodness. How'd she just have her baby? And then two seconds later, she's talking about being pregnant. So I'm trying to tell you guys in order. Um, what? No, I'm sorry. So it came to a point where I was at. And every time I would go deliver somewhere, usually at the business place, I wouldn't go into someone's household. I would literally have to go to the restroom to pee, y'all. Like, it was that serious. I didn't think it was that bad. And if you guys see my pregnancy pictures, you wouldn't think I was pregnant. You might think I had a little gut. And that's really it. But other than that, you wouldn't think I was pregnant. Because your girl was killing it. Like, now I'm bigger than when I was nine months pregnant. Ain't that crazy? Well. Ooh. I um I did the delivery job. I kept doing it. My job was so nice. Where when I would schedule appointments, 
they would let me off early, like real early, y'all. I'm talking about going for three hours and you off. But your girl was really good at her job too. So I only needed three hours to get my deliveries done and I was done. Um, I would literally go in there because I was so scared that this pregnancy wasn't going to just be great. Like, I read a lot about miscarriages and things like that and I was just scared. Like, I'm not going to lie or front about it. Like, I thought that's a big possibility. So for me, myself, I wasn't so excited. Because they say not to get too excited until you hit at the end of your second trimester or beginning of your third trimester and that's when you're in the clear so i literally had a doctor's appointment like every two months i feel like because this the sickness was so bad guys like so bad and oh excuse me it just wasn't it but afterwards around may so i believe i was five or six months pregnant by then I had quit my job you know my husband my husband was in the reserves at first and then he went active duty um, when we did that we got relocated to San Diego which is where I was this boy this is where it gets rough so in San Diego my husband had to leave me for a month, and that month I couldn't handle it. I had too many emotions going on. My, I was still scared about my pregnancy, and I ended up coming back to SAC for almost a month to get back. Um, thank God for that because when I was in SAC, I had to go to the ER. Because I kept feeling um, contractions, real contractions, real life contractions. But at this time, guys, I'm only like seven months pregnant or six and a half months pregnant, which is really weird, you know? No, these are not, um, what is it called? Braxton Hicks. These were real life contractions. And I went in there and they gave me a shot to stop the contractions because my son was too early to be born. And they didn't want that to happen because something bad could happen. Mm. So, you know, obviously I'm going to do what's best. What's best for my baby and I. And I took the shot. Afterwards, they checked on me. They said, everything's clear. You're good to go. I left. And thank you to my brother for taking me because he was really a good support for me. And my sister-in-law, they were both really there for me during that time because it was really well. And, yeah, I ended up eventually going back to San Diego. My husband came back. And, like, a week later, I had them contractions again, y'all. Real life contractions. So I had to go back to the dang hospital. Same routine. Take the shot because it's not working out. Take the shot. Same thing. It goes away. Now I'm just like, man, is this what being pregnant feel like? Because my shirt for sure felt rough. Mm. Went back home. What two was it? Sometime in August, I had my, August 10th, I had my baby shower. I went to my baby shower. Obviously, it's my baby shower. <laughs> but I'd be stupid not to show up. So I went to my baby shower. And, yeah, I was having a good old time with my family, taking pictures and everything. And it was great. You know, everybody's just like, oh my god, are you even pregnant? You're so small. No. They were just like, you're small enough to not have look like you're like you have a tummy, but it looks just like it's just tummy of him, you know, not extra weight put on. And I was like, oh, thank you. Y'all make me feel good about myself because then I feel like I'm not that fat. 
But yeah, uh, excuse me. Mm. After that, after the baby shower, I went back to San Diego. Mm. Yeah. By the way, y'all homegirl sat in the car like about nine to twelve hours on the rides. And you know when you're pregnant, you can't be holding your pee that long? Shoot. Two claps for me. Or maybe three claps. I don't know what I just did. But yeah. I didn't have to go that bad. Great for me. Okay. Once I go back, two weeks later, guess what your girl get? Real life contractions all over again. And... I'm like, oh my God, just come out, son. Just come out. You know you want to. There ain't no point in you hiding in there no more. Mm-hmm. He was like, let me out, mom. Let me out. And, you know, that was my, is that my third time? That was my third time going in. Okay. So, by that time, they asked me what's wrong and I said it's the same thing like last time it hurts can't do it my contractions are literally a minute less than a minute apart so they admit me they check out what's happening and then they were just like oh and you know what's crazy y'all I had my doctor's appointment the same exact day it was a Friday I had it earlier in the day so they had asked me and they said Mm, maybe we like maybe it's I don't know what's going on with your pregnancy but we'll see the nurse ended up asking me a question this is where it goes down she said hey do you know if your water broke or anything I said I don't know I don't think so because I kid you not my doctor my doctor told me said Sarah, girl, you know when your water break. When your water break, it's gonna go psh. You gonna hear a pop and a whole bunch of water flow out. I told my nurse, I said, honestly, I don't know. There was a moment in time, like a few days ago, where I coughed heck hard or something like that. And y'all gonna say this is disgusting, but my panties were soaked a little bit. Not like crazy, but you know, it looked like because I coughed. Yeah. But when you're pregnant, that happens. And I've been having that. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, I peed in my panties. Okay, and I was pregnant though. So it don't count. And that's what happened. So she was like, hey, I had this strip that could check to see if your water broke at all. She did it. She said, oh my goodness. She said, thank God you came in. That's not pee or anything. That's your, your like, what is it? I forgot what they called it. Was it the membrane? The water membrane? I'm about to sound stupid as hell right now. But yeah, that. Ha. Huh. Well, uh, they had to put me on like IV lines. And then my contractions were acting up. During that whole time, it was coming, 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 coming. Bam, admitted. I'm putting the IV line and stuff in me. But that, my contractions just slowly start fading away to like five minutes apart. So then they have to dose me with something where I can get my contractions. Every, I forgot what it was, but pretty much they had it like induced the contraction. Induced. Y'all do I sound stupid? I think I sound stupid. Thank God I don't have a degree in nursing. But yeah. Uh-huh. Um. Eventually, my contractions just keep kicking in. Keep kicking in. <laughs> yeah. And actually, my husband said, I can take that pedure. I'm going to tell you guys this. Prior to going to labor, I said, Nope. I ain't taking no epidural. I'm going to try to do a natural. Natural. Yeah. Because I thought I was gangster. <laughs> Little did I know the pain. So, I had to induce my contractions and went. I keep saying induce, like maybe that's a word. If not, I put it in there. 
and they did that the pain was going higher and higher and they said okay we're gonna have to hit you on your max level so when you need them that um epidural let us know that's it i don't need any of god that's a natural role labor yeah i lied afterwards i said give me that epidural <laughs> they were like oh my god she's crazy because they see my face and they said honey 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 if you don't or can't take the pain then don't take it you don't gotta fight it it's natural everyone do it i said but i'm not trying to sis mm -mm. i don't need it i don't want it yeah i said give me that shit. i took it oh my god when i took it the guy doing it was watching baseball according to my husband on his phone and doing it which is probably why it ran out so quick and I had to get induced the second time. Induced. Oh my god. Y'all, I'm so stupid. But I had to get epidural the second time. Mm -hmm. And I finally, well, finally my doctor came and she popped the bag. She popped the bag, y'all. Well, the rest of the bag. And popped. By this time, I don't think... I was 24 hours, was it 24 hours to 36 in? I forgot if 36 hours included. I think 36 hours was my whole labor and having my son, everything. So by that time, I was, after she popped in and stuff and it was time to push, I was trying to push. My son wasn't having it. He said, ah, ah, rather, ah, rather not. <laughs> I'm always sound like a damn monkey. But he was like, no, mom, uh-uh. And then... The doctor, she put her whole hands up in there, her fingers, whatever. I was like, oh, girl, danger zone, danger zone. And um, she said, well, it looks like your son's head is turned. So we we can't do this. So you can, and every time you keep pushing, his heartbeat keeps going down. So if you keep pushing, you're going to risk, you know, losing your son. And she was like, or we could do emergency C-section. She was like, but it's your choice. What would you? What? Girl, did you really just ask me if I'm going to keep pushing and knowing that I might lose my son or will lose my son? Girl, cut me. Cut me. Cut me open. So, they booked the OR room. Yeah. I don't know what was up with that dude, though, with the epidural. Like, mm -mm, it wasn't popping. Because when that happened... When they gave me whatever they need to do to numb my body, was it? I wasn't under, but I couldn't feel nothing. So when they did that, you guys, I had like I don't know if this has happened to other people, other mothers, during C section, but all that whatever that was in my body, like felt like it was trapped here because this shoulder, I kid you not, I couldn't move it, guys. I couldn't, and like it was just so hard. Mm. Mm -hmm. my whole time my husband wasn't in there because he couldn't be in there at the moment as they're first cutting me and i was like where's my husband you guys don't forget my husband don't forget my husband because my husband gonna kill me if he missed the birth of his son i mean you know i'm saying he ain't gonna get me but i'm saying it's just a big milestone you would want your significant other to be there if y'all are together, I mean, if y'all ain't, I ain't mad at that, you know, it's your choice. But I'm saying for me, I wanted him there. And then the pain was so unbearable. So I guess I had to look that way. And like, I don't know, I couldn't do it, honestly. It hurt. Like, I was seizing. Yeah, like literally seizing on the table. When the guy told me, the nurse was like, the one putting in the, I think the anesthesiologist putting it in. He was like, you need to stop moving and control your hands. Because I could put it. And I was like, ooh, mother beep. I swear, if I wasn't on this trying to give birth right now, I'll set it off. Okay? But, I wasn't trying to die on the table. Mm. That's what happened. As they were like cutting me open and went up. You see, they have like a, was it, like a sheet? And you're laying like this. And 
my hips. Oh, excuse me, y'all. So, my hands literally went like this, boop, and they were like, Sarah, are you okay? Because it literally almost hit their hands, like their surgical knives and everything as they're cutting me. And I'm like, it really hurts because I can't feel it. I can't feel it. I'm crying. I'm seizing on the table, like shaking, shaking bad. Like, I'm like, and they're like, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. And I'm like, it's not that, guys. I'm not panicking or anything. I don't know why. I could feel you guys cutting me. Maybe it wasn't. I don't know how you actually cut someone down there, like how it really feels, honestly, because I've never been cut before I got a C-section. So yeah, I mean, if I would, I probably wouldn't be alive. But yeah, I felt, could feel the pain. It was just so much pain it was to the point where my husband was in there and I said, babe, let me go. I'm, I'm sorry if I can't handle this. Just take care of our son. Let me die. Like, I can't, I don't know what to do. I feel like I was just barely hanging on for dear life. Uh, well, thank God everything was over. I mean, I could still feel the pain, but just being on that table while all the doctors are leaning over me, it just, it was too much. What? Before we've been doing so, y'all, they showed me my son. My son had a big old cone head, so this my head, right? The head went extra like this. I was like, oh my God, son, you got a big head. You must have inherited that from me. Y'all see this? But <laughs> he's cute, though. He's cute, y'all. And that pretty much happened. And they were like, you want to hold your son? Uh, I busted out bawling, guys. Like, I was crying my eyes out because I was like, I really want to, but I can't because I can't feel my arms. Like, how am I going to do this? And I don't know if y'all heard that, but my son screaming in the back. Yeah, he got lungs on him. And I was just like, I can't, I can't. And the nurses, if you look at them, they, they felt so bad because I was in so much pain. And then... After that happened, they took us to the recovery room. I was there, like, wheeling me out on the bed to the recovery room. I'm legit crying and screaming because I'm in pain. I'm like, I'm in pain, I'm in pain, I'm, and I'm crying. And they're like, what level of pain is it out of a 10? I said a 20. And they said, oh, my goodness. They kept giving me morphine, everything. It wouldn't work. Like, it came to a point where they said, we can only give you so much in, like, a hour 30 minute window I said just give me more I said I can't do it and like I mean there's nothing that they can do I don't blame them I mean they're just doing their job hopefully because <clears throat> after this all happened y'all like I was in so much pain when I say so much pain, I mean, like, worse than contractions once I got home. It was to the point where I was crying. Tylenol wasn't working. What else did they give me? I think codeine. That wasn't working. And y'all know that should work. It wasn't working. Um, I kept telling my husband, my husband's like, okay, maybe we need to go check it out. Maybe, like, this isn't right. This doesn't seem right. Okay. A week later of dealing with this pain, I tell my, I, there's one night, I, I was crying all night, all day. I was in too much pain. I couldn't handle it. And my husband's like, I can't do this no more. You need to go in. Like, I can't. And then prior to even me going in, I had called my doctor once my husband said, you need to go in. And I said, hey, doc, I'm in a lot of pain. I really can't handle it. The Tylenol that I take every four hours, the codeine that I take every eight, and then the extra, like, Advil, whatever I take, that's not working. And she was like, you shouldn't feel a lot of pain or whatever. She was like, remember, you had a C-section. It shouldn't be something that that you take lightly. It's not like a paper cut, so it should hurt. And I was like, okay. And my husband's like, no, you're not listening to your doctor. You're going to go in. And I said, okay, man. Damn. 
Like, don't tell me what to do. But I'll go in. Not because you said so. Huh? Well, I'm Guess y'all. Guess what, y'all? I got some great news. They said, girl, I don't know how you lasted with your life. You have a bowel obstruction and an infection. Uh, what's it called? Damn. An infectious disease. So, my intestines were all twisted like this. I couldn't go eat, or I couldn't eat, I couldn't go boo, like that. And I had, they said, I think, uh, like an infectious disease. So it was like in a ball, kind of, right, like this being. It was in a weird place, they said. They said it was like near my intestines. And they had to try to control everything and see what was going on. I had to call my dad. I said, dad, I'm going, or dad, I'm going to the doctors or to the ER right now. I can't handle the pain. I will let you know, but I might need you to come out here. And let me tell y'all this though. My dad, he don't drive like that. And I'm in San Diego. He's in Sacramento. It says eight hours, but y'all with traffic is like 10, 12 hours. 12 more likely because LA traffic. Um, wow. I was so shook. He came out. I said, hey, he must love me. He came out with my stepmom. Yeah. Mm -mm. They had to stay out there for literally a month. That's like almost how long I was hospitalized for. That's damn near. And they had a whole NG tube in me. You know, trying to suck everything out of my guts. And then they had, uh, they kind of like, what was it? It's like a needle, I guess. The way they put it into um, that infectious disease ball that I was telling you guys about. And was like sucking it out pretty much. So hopefully the ball could like reduce, reduce, reduce. And it did. But the thing that I really hated or hurt like a lot is just being in the hospital my, and I just had my son, you know, like I felt like I neglected him. Like I wasn't a, like a mother to him. Like it was just really hard for me. Um, I know he's still young, but to me, I'm going to have that in the back of my head. Like y'all going to think it's silly. I wasn't there for you. Like for the first three weeks, one month of your life, but it's rough when you didn't have a kid. Like, every little month, week, day, second, hour, like, it counts. It all counts, you know? And for me, if you guys notice, I didn't have the best childhood. But, I mean, I came out perfectly fine, I think so. And it worked. And, yeah, I was just really sad about that. But, as I was saying, I was there. They kept telling me, you were going to get out in two days, three days, four days. Eventually, it ended up being, like, what, two, three weeks in the hospital. It was shitty. Like, y'all ever heard of hospital food diet? It's a thing, y'all. The food not cracking. Um, it make you lose weight. When I say lose weight, I came home. I was like 15, 20 pounds lighter. I said, oh my God. I mean, it wasn't the best time of my life. But this is the easiest way to lose weight than the gym. Hey, y'all. Hospitals, where y'all at? Y'all should start um, selling meal preps because if people know about that, they're going to lose weight. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's pretty much what happened to me, guys. I just had a horrible experience with my pregnancy. Like, everybody always asks me, when are you going to have more kids? And stuff like that. One... I don't really know if I can have more kids, guys, because Messiah was, I feel like, already a miracle. And two, most of my family and close friends know what I went through. It wasn't it. It really wasn't, guys. So, yeah. So, that's my answer to you guys. I don't know if I'm going to have more kids. I don't know if I can. It's just, It's a scary thing for me. And you guys have to understand that. But... That was my story for today, guys. I hope you guys liked it. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, dislike, give it a thumbs up, whatever you guys do. Share it. I love you guys. Thank you.